Okay, here's a quick tip for when you're doing headshot photo sessions and you're in the editing stage. In order to give them all a consistent look so that when they're side by side or on a website, they look great together, you want them to have the same framing. Now, of course, you do your best in camera when you're at the photo shoot, but there's still some small tweaks you can do to get them perfect. So what you do is load up the first image of the series. I have these gentlemen in the blue shirts. I've already done the formal ones. I lined them up and I'll show you how I did that with this next series of photos. So open up the first one and then select the other ones and drop them on top. Press enter to confirm the sizing and placement of each. And you see they're all layers on top of each other with the file name uh, as the layer name. And what you want to do is uh, zoom in and we're going to draw a marker uh, where the top of the head and the bottom of the head are. You can even draw circles where you want the eyes and the mouth to line up. Um, but because people's facial proportions and angle is slightly different, sometimes it's better just to mark the top of the head and the bottom of the chin. Now find a photo that you feel is the best framing and uh, use that as your example. We also want to draw a center line vertically. So if you don't already have the rulers on, press Control R for rulers and right click and put this as percentage. Now you can click on the left ruler and drag to make a vertical line. You could also do the opposite, drag from here to make a ruler like this, or uh, sorry, a guide, not a ruler. So I'm gonna do a guide here. Uh, guides do not um, render when you save the file. They're only in Photoshop as a as a guide you can turn them on and off by pressing control uh, semicolon to hide them or bring them back they're also up here in the view show guides right there all right so that's the top of his head bottom of his chin he has a beard so maybe it's like right here i don't know <laughs> Um, and uh, he is perfectly centered look at that right down the middle of the eyes so i'm going to use him as the as the you know the template. Um, so now we need to make sure that everybody conforms to this uh, framing. So I'm going to press Z for zoom and press fit screen so that I can see everything. I'm going to go through each of these guys and make sure that they fit uh, that framing. So this one, perfect, bottom of his chin. Next guy, he needs to be enlarged a little bit. You see, you see that this is above his scalp, this is below his chin. So this guy's actually further away than the original guy that we set this template with. So press V for move. Make sure show transform tools is turned on up here. I'm gonna grab this side anchor and hold alt, which means expand from the center there. And then I'm gonna drag it down by holding shift, which makes it go straight down. You can also use your arrows to get it more exact. Sometimes it'll start snapping onto things and kind of messing you up. I'm going to drag over to the left, which is still keeping it proportional as long as this is checked right here on the top of that link. Um, but it also moved him to the left, which it needed to because he wasn't centered anymore. So I think that's pretty good. Let's check on that nice chin he's got. Oh, I need to move it down a little bit. Boop. And the top of his scalp still needs to go up a little bit. So I'm just going to drag the upper one right there. Okay, so once you're done moving and resizing things, click on that check mark. All right, uh, next one. Oh, we already set that. He was the template setter, so he's good. Next, this next gentleman needs to be moved up a little bit. He's a little low. I think he was shorter, so maybe that's why. And that is pretty much exact. Drag him up a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Next, this gentleman needs to also come up. Bottom of the chin, top of the scalp. All right, now he's no longer centered, so I'm gonna move him over just a few pixels, good. And the last guy, he is definitely farther away. I, I could already tell, he, you could see below his, you know, his forearms here. So I'm going, oh, he, he's the bottom layer. Um, so we need to unlock that by clicking on this little lock. Now you can move him around and resize him, stuff like that. So holding Alt, and then drag it straight down with Shift. Cool, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. I don't use tripods when I do photo shoots, <laughs> so that's why things are different here. Um, and drag them over a little to the right. Awesome, all right, cool. So now the next thing is we need to make sure that they're all safely cropped. Now one of these guys, I think it was this one, we actually had to move in, see there's a gap. So this is his image and this is a gap. So we want to find the smallest image because sometimes you have to, if you got into close, you'd have to shrink something a lot like this. And you know, if you do, you need to find where the edges of that photo is, the smallest one and crop based on that. Uh, the smallest common denominator, not the largest. So I'm gonna use guides to help me with the cropping. So I'm gonna drag a guide and it should snap on the edge of his photo. If it didn't snap, you need to turn on snap. So go to view, snap to and layers that way the guide will snap exactly 
pixel perfect on the edge. That blue line, that's the guide. Okay, and then over here we have another um, boundary of his image. Right, see it snapped perfectly. This will help us make the crop perfect as well. So there's no pixel peeping. We have to zoom in. We just drag and it'll snap onto the guides. And on the top of his image, it's good. See, it's actually going up. Um, we have, yeah, it's going above the image bounds. So that's good. We, we just needed to make a left, right, and bottom. And let me just double check, make sure he is the smallest image, smallest common denominator. And you can also go through these guys to make sure that they, as you shift through them, there's no like real obvious zoom in, zoom out. And I feel like this is pretty good. The background is changing, which does bother me a little bit. But you know what, they are what's most important and they are all consistently sized. So once we have our guides drawn for our crop assistance, we can um, go to crop, which is C. Make sure you're using original ratio, which is two by three. Um, and we're going to drag our edge crop onto that guide, right? You can actually zoom in, let's zoom in. C for crop and whoop, snap. See it snaps right onto that guide, which is great. And then we can just use our scroll bars. So I never use scroll bars. I usually use space bar to pan around. And um, this is the bottom boundary of that, that gentleman here. So we need to drag up, snap. And the other one, make sure, oh, scroll bars. Make sure that we are on the right boundary that we drew. And we are, we're not, we need to go in just a hair. Snap, snap. there we go, okay, cool. So fit the screen zoom and now there will be no loss of image with all these guys, especially the smallest image, which was him. Um, he is he is fitting within everything perfectly. Cool. Um, now, of course, I need to do some retouching, which would be removing stray hairs, fixing some blemishes, doing some skin smoothing if you do that. And then I'll need to save these as the originals. So because I have the file name here and I only have, what is a six of these guys, it's very easy. If you had a whole bunch of them, it might be a little bit more complicated, um, but I'm just gonna manually go file, save a copy, make sure it's JPEG, erase the word copy, which is so annoying. Why did, ugh, I hate that it does that. And just save changes to the original um, very carefully to make sure I don't overwrite somebody's image. Um, now that part of the workflow is not perfect yet, but I like to have them all as top layers so I can compare them all. And honestly, this is a pretty wide headshot. I think traditionally headshots are more like this, like sternum up. And I actually will do an alternate crop of that so that they get a, you know, a medium quote unquote headshot, medium portrait, um, and above the waist. And then they'll get a true headshot, which is like their sternum ch mid chest and up. Uh, but I do that after these are exported. These are kind of the originals, right? The untouched, well, they're retouched, but uh, these are the big size ones. And then I'll crop later um, to make the smaller ones. All right, here's another set of images from the same shoot. I had a different angle, different background. Um, I use the uh, top of the scalp, not the hair, but the top of the head scalp line and the bottom of the chin, line them all up and made sure they were centered. And um, here's another trick you can do to do that, that cropping a little bit easier without really using guides. But you do have to make sure you have the smallest image selected, right? The smallest common denominator. All these guys were good. They didn't have to really shrink much. This guy shrunk a little bit, but this one shrunk the most because you see on the left side, there's, there's a gap. So what you do to save some time, I'm gonna turn off my guides, make this cleaner, is control click on the layer. Now this is a bottom layer. I had to unlock it like I did earlier. But when you control click a solid image layer, it makes a selection around the bounds of that layer. Um, and I, you can see I have marching ants. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I've got a selection made around this image alone. And when you have a square selection made, uh, if you press C for crop, the crop is automatically fit to that selection. So there we go, saving me time. So I just control clicked the smallest layer and then C for crop and enter to confirm. And now they are all cropped uh, to that image size and all done. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more photography content coming very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.